Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna do about a 10 minute guide talking about raids and everything you need to know for Monday. The structure of this video is I'm gonna take a look at the map right now and give you some big hits on how to join and how to set it up. And then we're gonna take a look at the first three fights on the map which for me was Thanos, followed by Kang, followed by Maestro. We'll talk about the nodes and the things you need to know and to consider when you are doing a raid. So very first thing, I wanted you to take a look at this map. The way this map works, there are three lanes and they are each set up into pods of three. And within those pods of three, you need to have one tactician, one vanguard and one assault. When you join, it is very, very easy to filter and make sure that you pick the correct champion. You can only bring one champion champion. I'm Vanguard. I brought OG Spidey. I think he's pretty good for it. And basically this is going to be a little bit of front load work for your officers. They need to decide who's in the battle group, which lane they're in and which role are assigned. From there you get going. And the next most important thing is when you are coming up through this little portal here, you want to make sure that you pick the correct choice node for your champion. Now I'm Vanguard. Vanguard is the symbol in the middle. If I accidentally went to the wrong choice node, I would not be getting a benefit for my champion. Now really quickly, I'm going to show you what the benefit for my champion is right here. As you can see, basically I get more benefits based on if I am doing a taunt or a weakness, it is basically going to ramp me faster. All right. So that is the basics that you need to know before you join. We're going to actually dive right into the Thanos fight where I can continue to explain what you need to know when you're doing the raid but at this point just as a reminder you have been assigned a specific lane and a specific role and you will use the filter to pick one champion from that role and join and then move to your choice node and then you're ready to go let's get into some gameplay now when it comes to the details of how your ramping works it's very complicated so i'm going to get into that later in the video what you need to know now is this first bullet point is always the most important it is your raids mission against thanos he's going to be prompting you to intercept to block hits and to dodge and then the other thing you need to know is that each of these champions has their own node. The first defender on each of the paths has the strength node, which is basically escalating furies. And then toward the end of the fight, they can root you during the special. All right, so as we go into this fight, even if we don't know anything about how raids work, if it's our turn, we go in and we just try to do that mission as much as we can. We try to bait his specials as much as we can, try to not die. There are two ways that this fight will end, and I can guarantee you I will not be able to kill this Thanos because there's a 10% damage cap. If I hit 10%, then I will automatically die, or if the three minutes expires, I will automatically die. Now, Kabam is giving us, I think, two free revives a day, and this is the reason that the raids seem like they won't take that long, but they really will if you want to utilize those free revives because you're only going to be able to revive twice a day or so, depending on how much you have in the overflow and things like that so essentially you may not even get this thanos down on the first day and what i'm currently doing now is ramping up myself and my team it's going to take you guys going through the cycle one or two times before you start to really see some big damage this is not even going to be halfway of the maximum damage that i can do against this thanos so again just looking at the fight itself let's not worry about anything about how we're ramping or anything like that the only thing that i'm trying to to do is fight this Thanos and as often as I can fulfill the prompts. I have a node that when there are weaknesses or taunts on this Thanos, it's going to help ramp me even further. And the weaknesses come from punishing his heavies and specials. The taunts come from my kits, which is one of the reasons I like Spider-Man here is because he has the taunts, which is going to make this job a little bit easier. So I'm going to fast forward the rest of this clip because essentially I'm going to not make it to the end of the, the time, the 10 percent timer. Three minutes expires. I take off eight percent. And that's about the end of that. Now, talking about the order, again, we'll get into the nitty gritty a little bit later. The most important thing that you need to know is you all need to establish an order of who's going when. And it doesn't really matter what the order is. It just matters that you keep that order. And my suggestion is that you just permanently keep it. It's the fairest way to spread the revives among all of you. And it will also make sure that you keep your ramp. So we had Assault go first, which was Cam. And then I'm Vanguard, I went second. And then Tactician was Cap Murdoch and she went third. So basically we just kept going in that order. 
until this Thanos died. So again, the bare bones that you need to know is join, pick your choice node, establish an order, go in and fulfill the missions and keep going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, until that Thanos is dead. With that, let's move on to the Kang fight and we're gonna talk a little bit more about what the HUD means and how to multiply our damage. So before we get into the Kang fight, I am gonna just pause here and talk a little bit about the roll charges. The first thing you need to know is that when you go in and you complete the missions like we just did with Thanos, you are building roll charges for the person to your left. So if Assault goes first, they give it to Vanguard, then Vanguard gives it to Tactician, and then Tactician gives it back to Assault. This is why I would recommend going in the order, whichever you pick and whoever you start with, to continue going to the left to make sure that the person always Always has charges. Now the charges mean different things depending on your role obviously. The role with your own name, so my own vanguard charges, these do not multiply my damage but they are instead my entry fee to joining the fight and being able to do more damage. So by the fact that I have nine it means I could go in nine times and still get some bonus damage. But the actual bonus damage itself is calculated by sort of an exponential formula using the sum of the other two rolls charges. So for me, it would be the sum of the assault and the tactician charges, the two charges that are not my own, that is how much extra damage I'm going to do. But I also need the vanguard charges of myself for basically entering into the fight, okay? So that's really important to remember. And as we get into this Kang fight, I'm gonna explain it a little bit more as we go over the HUD. All right, so Kang probably has the easiest mission to complete. You essentially need to alternate between medium and light ending combos, which isn't that hard to do. And then you just gotta bait his special one. I wouldn't recommend going to the special two, but he does throw that thing all over the place. So in the next fight, I am gonna mostly be talking about the HUD and the things that you need to look at. So when you start, you only have two icons on your HUD. The first one is your fervor, which is basically when you complete the missions, this number goes up to 50. When it gets to 50, you not only get a new orange icon, which is called your roll force, but you also start to build the charges for your tactician, which are those purple ones, all right? So my tactician started with eight. I've already completed two full rounds of the mission, so now my tactician is up to 10, and then this is also building up how much damage I'm able to do. So again, the orange is how much damage multiplier am I getting? I am now maxed out for this particular fight at 17, which is about as high as it goes. It only goes up to 20. And you can see it's really, really adding a lot of damage for me. And then you're seeing because of the weaknesses and taunts, I'm getting some additional red damage as well. All right, so once again, the orange part of the HUD is your damage multiplier. The gray part of the HUD is the little things that you build up by completing the missions so that you add charges. And that will also refresh your orange timer. And then the purple one, for me, those are my tactician charges that I am building up for my friend next to me, Cat Murdoch, the, uh, who is the tactician. And I believe I have maxed out the, the total amount that I can get in all of these categories. So you're gonna see my HUD look pretty static for the rest of this fight. Now, because I have so much more damage than I did in that Thanos fight, I am pretty easily going to be able to get this guy to the 10% threshold, and you're gonna see what happens when you hit that 10% damage cap. You pretty much just auto die. And then the other thing to note right there, we do auto die, is that the second node of every quest has an escalating pierce and also stun immunity if you make it to like the last minute of the quest, all right? So you do have to watch this special three animation as you auto die, and in the next fight against Maestro, we're going to talk a little bit about Maestro's node itself, as well as just a little bit about how the free revives work and a little bit about how, you know, you're going to be able to tackle this over a seven day period. So that Kang went down pretty easily. Let's first talk about the Maestro. Wherever the Maestro is on your line, uh, he will be having this node where you need to be punishing his heavies and his special attacks to build your fervor so that you continue to build the charges. And I'm going into this fight where he's fully ramped up. Now the tricky thing is if you are in the far left lane like we are, Maestro is your third fight. And the third fight on the map has a very difficult node combination where not only do you have the Escalating Furies and Pierce, but you also have 
have crit rate and they can crit through block by the end. So when you're trying to bait heavies and push into the special two, it's gonna be a little bit of a tricky time. One of the reasons I like Spider-Man here is because he has the stun on the special two. It's pretty easy to combo him up to special two of Maestro and continually bait that. If you have the special one decks down, more power to you, but it is going to hurt if you accidentally get hit for that or you take it in the block. Now, you've probably seen that I've been using these revives, right? There are revives that are going to be provided every week. If I understand correctly, you get two a day, which means that every day you do a raid for free. If you're utilizing those revives, you can do three entire fights. And then if your team goes through the entire cycle the three times, then you just take a chill pill, wait till you get your free revives on the next day, and you go in. This whole event, getting down these three bosses and then the final Ultron boss, which I don't have footage of today, that you have a whole seven day cycle to get through that. So it will feel like you're not going into the uh, every day, like taking off a big chunk. Like you may not even get that Thanos down on the first day, but that's okay. You have seven days to get it down. As long as you don't procrastinate, it will always work. And if you run out of free revives because you make mistakes, you can use regular AQ consumables. It's just, you won't be able to start at 100% health. So you might run into a little bit of trouble there. All right, so overall, some of the pain points here are that the coordination with the group of three might be a little tricky. So I hope that when you are in a pot of three, it's with people that you like and people that you can have a good time with because you are gonna need to communicate and coordinate. The other thing to keep in mind is that every boss has their own ramp. So you have to start at zero every time you get to a new boss, which is a little bit annoying. And then the final thing to say is that the rewards are pretty good. There are chests, there are three chests, and I saw everything from 2,000 Titan Shards to 10 Paragon Crystals to one and a half tier six class catalysts uh, to just stuff like tier 3A and tier 6B. I don't know what the full drop rates are on the chest, but they are quite good and they are random and you get three of them. Additionally, you get a chunk of seven star shards and then the rest of the rewards for the week are kind of like traditional uh, AQ type rewards. So hopefully this quick guide has given you just a little bit of a taste of what this is going to be like. The most important thing I can tell you is make sure you go to the right choice node and then make sure once you establish that order, which I suggest is going to the left, like starting with assault and going to tactician always works stay with the order it's going to be the cheapest for all your teammates and if you can try to be in a pod with people that you like playing this game with because you will need to communicate if this person tags you you do not want to be annoyed so you want to be people that have a similar schedule that can get on you can treat this like a queue where you just tag someone and say you're up or you can treat it like incursions where all of you get together and like in the span of 15 or 20 or 30 minutes i don't know how long it'll take you can just knock out as many of your free revives as possible and then put it down it's not going to be a huge commitment every day you do have the whole week but it will be more coordination than we're used to in aq and you do need to keep that in mind so anyway if you have any questions let me know i'm sure other content is coming out i will say check out bitter steel simula and msd stream which is happening on saturday you can watch the footage of that if you want to see the entire raid experience but i wanted to boil it down for you just a little bit more simply today that's all i got for you enjoy your raids. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.